In this episode we are going to do some basic leak testing before we put the drive unit back in the car. It's two hours later, everything has been torqued to 14.14 Newton meter. So when you torque every bolt and you're done, you will see that the gasket will slowly squeeze out a little bit, reducing the torque. So then retorque the whole thing again and maybe a third time and at the third time in my case I saw that the, the torque was still uh, the same. Next we're going to put the Dextron 6 in the gearbox. It is 1.3 liters. Uh, so I opened the filler bolt and uh, we're going to do it uh, with this. And uh, you have to fill it until it has reached the bottom of the hole or maybe up to four millimeters lower below the bottom of this hole but i don't know how to measure that so i'm just going to do it until the bottom of this hole and it should equal 1.3 liters so i put uh, 200 milliliters uh, more in there in order to reach the bottom of the hole I used this funnel for that, like this, and I checked if it's the right level. If you take a Q-tip and you put it in through the center without touching any surface, and then you go down and you back through the center, and then it is uh, red, it means it has enough in it. Uh, before you put in any oil, make sure the, the drive unit is horizontal, both like this and like this, so you don't overfill or underfill it. Next we put back the filler bolt. Now I wait 24 hours and see if any pools of red fluid forms on the table and if that's the case um, it's bad we have to put it apart again and uh, reseal everything. Make sure your table is clean from uh, red uh, spills so you don't confuse uh, the spills from now with a real leak. If you want you can put the axles back in both of them without the little clip like this so it's easy just with one hand you can put them in or out and then simultaneously you can uh, rotate them to spray some oil internally onto the primary shaft and maybe if you did a really bad job uh, you can see the oil come out of the seal if it doesn't seal properly and you have to rotate both shafts simultaneously because there's a differential in there if I would have put, popped in only one shaft then it would only rotate the uh, differential. Also keep in mind that the oil pump only works when you drive forward. So for the RAV4 and the Mercedes that corresponds to this rotation direction. For the Tesla it's the opposite. While we're waiting for the leak check we can put the reluctor wheel on the shaft. So I assemble it like this at first because then uh, I can uh, hammer it on there a plastic piece like this, some wood, I can hammer it and then the forces are transmitted to the ground because it's supported on the ground mainly. This is just to keep it from falling, the, the force is going to the ground. If instead you would do this assembly after you put the rotor in the housing and then you start hammering away, then uh, the impact forces will be transferred through the ceramic balls of the bearings which I think increases the chance of chipping and bearing damage. So I think this is the correct order, but correct me if I'm wrong. But first we tested if emergency drain number one did not leak through the Loctite and after several days there are no signs of leakage, so that's good. So it's on there right now the distance between the shaft and and the reluctor wheel is 15 and a half millimeter that's what it should be also look how nicely the breather has clearance from the reluctor wheel very good over here the loctite blue completely disappeared did not do any job i don't know where it went so instead i'm putting some uh, permatex ultra black on there just uh, squeeze it out there and then uh, spread it out with a little screwdriver. 
course this is what I happen to have at hand. And then I'll uh, put the net back on. Maybe not ideal, but uh, I think it will be fine. So I finger tightened the nuts. Now I wait two hours and then I'll uh, torque them to uh, six newton meter. The one big disadvantage of using Permatex Ultra Black is that it is silicone. So in the future, if you want to put something else uh, on these bolts to seal it, first you have to properly remove all of the uh, silicone because nearly nothing will adhere to uh, silicone. So in that sense, maybe thread sealant would be a better option. Next I'm going to drain the gearbox fluid so I can rotate this whole unit up so I can drop the rotor in from above which is a more controlled way of doing it and if the gearbox fluid would still be in there then it would pour out of this hole over here which would give a mess so that's why I drain it first. And it is draining. Next, before we uh, insert the rotor, we will engage the parking pole. So with the M6, we click it, and now we have to rotate the gears until the parking pole snaps in a notch, in a, into a notch. Now we will rotate the gears until the parking pole snaps in place. seems to be already in place because I cannot rotate it anymore so that means yeah you can hear it click the pole already snapped into one of the notches so the the pole happened to be above one of the uh, notches so that's good so the reason to lock the parking brake in is that uh, if you do not do that and you put the rotor in and you spin the rotor it may induce currents in the stator windings uh, sending current to the inverter which may cause some damage, I have no clue, but I better better be safe than sorry. Next we put the chain back on, the hoist, and we put it from the table on the ground. And now we have to flip it back up so we can drop the rotor in there. Also make sure to put blocks below the drive unit, otherwise you will damage the little emergency drain number two. Now we hoist it upright and strap it to the ladder and to the table and it's partially supported on the ladder wrong uh, so does it so that it's less chance of falling over when we put the rotor back in there so the next thing we're going to put the old grease back on the uh, spline before you plop in the rotor uh, we put back the grease on the spline make sure that the o-ring is back i put a little bit of dacron 6 on it make it clean vacuum clean everything a last time vacuum clean this last time make sure that the uh, the c-clip is in place also glued with uh, Loctite 648 and then I'm going to put uh, some Permatex Ultra Black uh, on this surface over here so that this surface stays clean and I can lift this shield without getting my hands all filthy. Permatex is on, next we're going to drop in the rotor. Now we need to bolt it in. Next I put in the bolts. I forgot to clean them beforehand so make sure you do that. And then uh, rotate it back until you hear a click. That means it's engaging properly and not ruining the thread. And then finger tighten it. It's two hours later and now we tightened all these M13 with a 16, 1, 6 newton meter. <clears throat> Next we're going to mount uh, the manifold.
Now when you mount the manifold you can just barely see the yellow uh, excluder lip <clears throat> try to uh, to not fold it double try to look all the way around before you finally push it in also do not forget the rubber o-ring that you can see inside there there the manifold is on what I forgot to say is you have to clean the act the shaft very good with acetone before you put it on otherwise uh, the effectiveness of the seal is not so good Next we put some uh, silicone around this hole over here and over here and with uh, one, two, three bolts we put this pipe back. Silicone is on, there and there. So we take the pipe and uh, put it in there. there. The pipe is on and look and guess how lucky we are that there is one or two millimeters distance uh, between the breather and the pipe. I totally forgot there was a pipe there. I did not put it in my 3D cat model so that's what you get. Phew. Okay, now the breather is nicely protected by the pipe as if it's by design. <laughs> right, we're two hours later so I torqued one two three four five six bolts here with six newton meter instead of four which i measured because four is yeah I don't know, too little and this one this one this one with 10 newton meter next we're going to do a leak test so we have some uh, g48 put it in a bucket with the hose goes to a pump to the inlet and it goes through the drive unit it comes out here and it goes back in the bucket Also I opened the, um, the drain of the transmission fluid, so if there is uh, any coolant going into the transmission, it may go out here. We run the coolant for 15 minutes and there are no obvious leaks. So the next step is to uh, take a final uh, look at the inverter before we uh, bolt it shut. But first we have to uh, reconnect the wires according to our numbering, zip tie it and plug it back into the uh, circuit board over there. So you plug the wires in as follows, you take the connector and a wire and uh, just push it in there and number three There, number four. There we go. And then we have this blue little thingy goes on top. Snap it in. Two two snaps. One left, one right. Uh, good. All right, I added the zip tie there around the braid. Then uh, one there, one there, one there, and one around the 
uh, blue and the green wires in and I plugged it back into the PCB there. So now we can close the inverter. Next we are going to uh, mount the bus bars. I am glad that the epoxy that I used for the potting somewhere here is somewhat elastic because we have to push these bus bars a little bit to the side to make them align with the holes. Alright, we mounted the orange thingy over here and the little plate over there. That's it for this episode. We found no obvious leaks yet. Finally, this photo shows the Dextron 6 level using a red wire after a complete fill, which is to the bottom of the fill hole. It shows that the fluid level is roughly 50 mm or 2 inch below blocking the oil spray nozzles. Still, sloshing or driving downhill for Toyota or Mercedes or uphill for Tesla could block the oil nozzles, so the oil level should not be too high. See also the Weaver University YouTube channel for more about this in the link down below.